In this video, we're going to look at the conditions for reaction spontaneity based off of the sign of the enthalpy and the entropy of the reaction. So our Gibbs energy of the reaction, if that is greater than zero, then we say that that reaction is endergonic, like it's the analog of endothermic, but for Gibbs energy instead of enthalpy. So this is not spontaneous, or it's spontaneous in the reverse direction. If we have alternatively the Gibbs energy, which is less than zero for a reaction, then we say that it is exergonic, and that's like the analog of exothermic, but for Gibbs energy. And that reaction is going to be spontaneous in the forward direction. So reminding ourselves some of uh, some expressions that we've seen before, the Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to the enthalpy of reaction minus T times the entropy of reaction. And as I've said, some terms that we have defined before, if we have delta H of reaction is greater than zero, then the system absorbs heat and that is endothermic. If delta H of reaction, the enthalpy of reaction is less than zero, then that was called exothermic and the system releases heat. And also in terms of the entropy, we know that we want to produce entropy because producing entropy will lower our Gibbs energy because of this minus sign in front of it. So if delta S is greater than zero, then there's not really as good of a word here, but we'll just say that it is entropically favored when you're producing entropy during the reaction. And if your reaction entropy is less than zero, then we will say that you are entropically disfavored. That looks weird for some reason. Let's do that again. Entropically disfavored. Okay, so we can make a table based off of the sign of these values and determine whether uh, a reaction is spontaneous and at what types of temperatures it will be spontaneous. Okay, so let's make our table here. We're going to say sign of delta H of reaction, sine of delta S of reaction, and sine of delta G of reaction. Okay, so if delta H of reaction is negative, it's, in, it's exothermic, and if delta S of reaction is positive, it's entropically favored. So it's favored by both of those, and thus delta G is going to be negative. This reaction will be spontaneous, and this reaction will be exergonic, and it will be spontaneous in the forward direction at all temperatures. Okay, alternatively, if we have the reaction with a positive enthalpy of reaction, it is endothermic, it absorbs heat. If it has a negative entropy of reaction, it is entropically disfavored. So it absorbs heat and it's entropically disfavored. Both of those are bad for delta G. So that means that delta G of reaction will be positive. It will be endergonic and it will not be spontaneous in the forward direction. It will be spontaneous in the reverse direction. And that is true <coughs> at all temperatures. Then we have the mixed cases where we have delta H of reaction where you have an exothermic reaction which is favorable but you have an entropically disfavored reaction where the entropy decreases during the reaction so it's only at certain temperatures where the entropy where the uh, enthalpy is large enough to compensate for the entropy or should I say the entropy becomes small enough that the enthalpy wins so this means that delta G of reaction is only going to be negative at temperatures which are less than 
the ratio of delta H to delta S. So you'll see if G equals zero, then delta H equals T delta, delta H equals T delta S. So T equals delta H over delta S, where that equilibrium, uh, where the reaction is at equilibrium. So temperatures below that, the, ent the enthalpy is gonna win. Temperatures above that, the entropy is gonna win. So it's only at low T. So we'll say at low temperatures where those are spontaneous. I'm gonna make some more rows here just to keep these separated. Okay, and then lastly, we have an endothermic reaction, positive enthalpy, which is entropically favored, um, produces entropy. So at low temperatures, it is endothermic, and it's going to be not spontaneous. But you have to get to a hot enough temperature, which produces enough entropy to overcome that. So it's going to be, it's going to be a negative Gibbs energy at temperatures which are greater than the ratio of enthalpy to entropy during the reaction. So this is our, these are temperature uh, reactions which are only going to be end which are only going to be exergonic at high temperatures. So just from analyzing the signs of the enthalpy and the entropy of the reaction, we can get clued in as to whether we think this reaction is favorable and uh, at what kind of temperatures it might be or might not be favorable.